In keeping with our liturgy, I'm going to ask Wayne to offer the intention of Holy Mass, and that is found on page 8. Wayne, if you would, please turn to page 8. Let us pray. Father, we have come into your presence to share and offer you the great sacrifice of your blessed Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And to receive the sacrament of his most sacred body and blood, we do so in remembrance of his life, death, and passion, and in thanksgiving for all the blessings you have bestowed upon your holy church and upon us, unworthy sinners. We wish to offer this Mass and to receive Holy Communion with all the love and contrition of which we are capable, and in conformity with the sacred intention of our Savior who instituted it, as well as the Church, whoever offers it. We desire, therefore, to offer this Mass and to receive Holy Communion for your greater glory, for the continual remembrance of the sacrifice of Christ, to thank you for all the blessings you have given us, to ask your help for the problem we have, to ask you to bless all our relatives and friends for those who have died, for our own special intentions. Bless the priest to whom we will make this oblation. Bless all the people who are here to participate in this glorious action and all who would like to be here. Convert all sinners, preserve peace, and heal the anguish of the world, and have mercy on all the faithful of the body. All these things we ask in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> to thee we come, O Lord our God, before thy altar wander, thou knowest us thy yearning hearts, this supplication answer. And now please make an examination of your conscience. <laughs> Having confessed our sins unto God, let us recite together the first act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, who knows the innermost secrets of my heart, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. In your presence, O God, I earnestly repent of all my sins, and I am truly sorry that I have offended you. Most loving Father, have mercy on me and forgive my sins. I resolve to amend my life, to improve and sanctify it, that I may become worthy to serve you faithfully all the days of my life. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. 
In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, you will again renew us. Show us your mercy, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we may enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. Love the Lord, all you faithful. The Lord protects the loyal. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of God. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. <coughs> Almighty and merciful God, your church is a mosaic of people, cultures, and traditions. In celebrating our diverse heritage, we praise you. Lead us that in our diversity, we may continue to seek you in ways that remind us of your all-encompassing love. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. In those days, Alec came and waged war against Israel. Moses therefore said to Joshua, Pick out certain men, and tomorrow go out and engage Amalek in battle. I will be standing on top of the hill with the staff of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses told him. He engaged Amalek in battle after Moses had climbed to the top of the hill with Aaron and Hur. As long as Moses kept his hands raised up, Israel had the better of the fight, but when he let his hands rest, Amalek had the better of the fight. Moses' hands therefore grew tired, so they put a rock in place for him to sit on. Meanwhile, Aaron and Hur supported his hands, one on one side and one on the other, so that his hands remained steady till sunset. And Joshua mowed down Amalek and his people, with the edge of the sword, the word of the Lord. Thank you, God. The response for today's psalm is, Our help is from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Our help is from the Lord who made heaven and earth. I lift up my eyes toward the mountains. Whence shall help come to me? My help is from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Our help is from the Lord who made heaven and earth. May he not suffer your foot to slip. May he slumber not who guards you. Indeed, he neither slumber, slumbers nor sleeps, the guardian of Israel. The Lord is your guardian. The Lord is your shade. He is beside you at your right hand. The sun shall not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will guard you from all evil. He will guard your life. The Lord will guard your coming and your going, both now and forever. Our help is from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. 
with all prayer and supplication, pray at every opportunity in the Spirit. To that end, we watch over the offers of ears in the supplication for all the holy ones. The second reading is taken from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, remain faithful to what you have learned and believed, because you know from whom you learned it and that from infancy you have known the sacred scriptures, which are capable of giving you wisdom for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for refutation, for correction, and for training in righteousness, so that one who belongs to God may be competent, equipped for every good work. I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing and his kingly power, proclaim the word, be persistent, whether it is convenient or inconvenient, convince, reprimand, encourage, through all patience and teaching, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Will he then delight in the Almighty, Almighty and call upon him constantly? Alleluia, alleluia. Almighty and eternal God, who cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the holy gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, Lord. And Jesus told his disciples a parable about the necessity for them to pray always without becoming weary. He said, there was a judge in a certain town who neither feared God nor respected any human being. And a widow in that town used to come to him and say, render a just decision for me against my adversary. For a long time the judge was unwilling, but eventually he thought, while it is true that I neither fear, not, fear God nor respect any human being because this window, widow has bothered, bothering me. I shall deliver a just decision for her, lest she finally come and strikes me. The Lord said, pay attention to what the dishonest judge says. Will not God then secure the rights of his chosen ones who call out to him day and night? Will he be slow to answer them? I tell you, he will see to it that justice is done for them speedily. But when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Praised by all of us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Your testimonies are my heritage forever, for they are the joy of my heart. Words taken from the book of Psalms, Psalm 119, verse 111. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. To you, my dear brothers and sisters, today we celebrate Heritage Sunday. But what do we mean when we speak of heritage? 
Heritage is defined as that which is inherited. To understand our true relationship with God, we search Holy Scripture. Our heritage as people of God began with God's covenant with Abraham, as found in Genesis chapter 17, verses 1 and 2. When Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am God Almighty, walk before me faithfully and be blameless. Then I will make my covenant between me and you and will greatly increase your numbers. This covenant was a promise made by God to bless Abraham and his future generations. In Genesis chapter 17, verse 6 and 7, we read where God now says to Abraham, I will make you very fruitful. I will make nations of you, and kings will come from you. I will establish my covenant as an everlasting covenant between me and you, and your descendants after you, for the generations to come, to be your God and the God of your descendants after you. We find that this covenant, which is a heritage, would be a blessing upon all future generations of Abraham. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verses 1 through 6, we read, And if you faithfully obey the voice of the Lord your God, it will set you high above all the nations of the earth, and these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. If you, if you obey the voice of the Lord your God, blessed shall be you in the city, and blessed shall be you in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of your womb, and the fruit of your ground, and the fruit of your cattle, the increase of your herds, and the young of your flock. Blessed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. You will be blessed when you come in and be blessed when you go out. And it is throughout the entire Old Testament that we see God keeping his promise, his heritage that he gave unto us through Abraham and to all those for whom he calls. In the New Testament, we are reminded of our heritage with God as Christians. In the first letter of Peter, chapter 2, verses 9 and 10, Peter again reminds us of our heritage. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty works of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. It was out of love that God chose us to a very special relationship with him. In this relationship, we find meaning and purpose of life. Jesus himself declares this calling out as found in the Gospel of John, chapter 15, verse 16, when he says, You have not chosen me, but I have chose you. Jesus reminds us in John chapter 10 that he is the good shepherd watching over his sheep. I believe that when Jesus spoke the words, come, follow me, he was not speaking to just his first chosen, the 12 apostles, but rather he spoke and he speaks today to all of us of this rich heritage that we find through Christ Jesus. 
In Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 8, verse 15 and 17, Paul writes, For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear. You have received the spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. My brothers and sisters, we are taught by our Lord that we are God's children and that we have been imbued with his Holy Spirit. Paul clarifies this in Romans. So our first heritage is of a biblical and spiritual nature. The second heritage that many of us share is our Polish heritage. The history, the language, the traditions, the customs we have all inherited from our Polish ancestors. But it goes beyond just the Polish heritage. For as we pray today, we are a mosaic of people. And this mosaic encompasses all different ethnic heritage, heritages, which we hold close and dear and special in our heart. An example of the celebration of our Polit Polish heritage is the annual Pulaski Day Mass and Parade in which remember, we remember our Polish heritage. We also celebrate a heritage of being Americans, but that will be for another day and another sermon. Finally, we celebrate today our heritage of being members of the Polish National Catholic Church. It is a rich heritage that was given to us through the efforts of our first bishop and organizer of the Polish National Catholic Church, the Most Reverend Francis Hodor. He, along with the early organizers, were persecuted, but it was through truth, work, and struggle, the model of our church, that we have a way unto Christ through a blessed church. Through their efforts, we continue to affirm our heritage today, for God did not abandon those who sought God's work through his word. In 1929, this heritage found its way to South Deerfield, where a group of Polish immigrants heard and answered the call from God to build and dedicate a church based on their faith and their love for God. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, on this Heritage Sunday, we remember the covenant that we have with God as His children. It all began with a promise that was made that if we faithfully obey the voice of the Lord our God and carefully fulfill all his commandments that he has given unto us, then we will be blessed by the Lord our God and that he will set us on high above all the nations of the earth. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> He is 
ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the Lord of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. For I long to see you that I may share with you some spiritual gift so that you may be strengthened, that is, that you and I may be mutually encouraged by one another's faith, yours and mine. stands on a level ground in the great congregation, I will bless the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Receive this offering, most holy Trinity, which we make in remembrance of the passion, resurrection, and ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ, and in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, that it may add to their honor and aid our salvation. May they whose memories we honor on earth intercede for us in heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted this day by God our Heavenly Father. Amen. Let us pray, all encompassing Father. At the call of your Son, we, people from many nations and cultures, gather together as one body, accept these gifts of bread and wine, that they become for us our spiritual food and unite us as one family in Christ Jesus. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Oh, 
all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through his cross and resurrection, he freed us from sin and death and called us to the glory that has made us a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, and a people set apart. Everywhere we proclaim your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. Therefore, on this Heritage Sunday, we gather with the voices of the seraphim, the cherubim, the archangels, and all your angels, along with all the saints and the entire church, and we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, God, power, and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices, which we offer to you in the first place, for your holy Catholic Church, that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our prime bishop, and Paul, our bishop, and all who profess the true Orthodox and Catholic faith, which comes to us from the Apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord. We pray this day for the sick, the suffering, and the dying, for the lonely, the homeless, and the hungry, for all abused and neglected children in our world, for all victims of violence, both here and abroad, for those who serve in our armed forces. And all here present, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for whom we offer, or who offer up to you the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own, for their hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God. We join in communion with and honor above all others, the memory of Mary the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ. Also, your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who lived, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow in their heroic example making us worthy of your grace and love through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering and that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace, that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people through Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and to confirm this offering and to make it pleasing to yourself so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before his suffering and death in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, to draw them to himself, make them joyful and save them. He instituted these holy mysteries in which spiritually and bodily in his entire being, he again lives among his people. At that solemn moment, so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you, his Father Almighty, giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. Mm -hmm. 
in like manner after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you. He blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ your Son, our Lord, and his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which your high priest Melchizedek offered you a holy sacrifice in immaculate host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we, who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar, may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and who now sleep in peace. To these souls, Lord, and all rest in Christ, grant we pray a place of refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs and with all your saints who shed their blood for the, your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy and with lives patterned after their divine master merited eternal joy. Numbers in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits but pardoning our offenses through Christ our Lord. Amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching. Have him following divine example, we say with confidence, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Together with your blessed apostles, Peter, Paul, also Andrew, 
and all the saints. Grant us peace in our day. Supported by the help of your mercy, may we always be free from sin and secure from all disturbance. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. May this commingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us who receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free us from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your teaching and never let us be parted from you, who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for our judgment or condemnation, Though we are unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become our safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving master, awaken in us a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant this who lives and reigns with God the Father, in unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. I will take the bread of heaven and call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy. That you should come into my heart, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. What shall I return unto the Lord for all the graces he hath rendered unto me? I will take the chalice of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all of my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord.
most sacred banquet, the memorial of the Last Supper, in which our Savior gives himself to be food for mankind, and in the deep of truth he unites himself with them. Hear our prayers, heaven. God's presence and the Word was God. 
He was present to God in the beginning. Through him all things came into being. And apart from him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in him found life, life for the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness of darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God who came as a witness to testify to the light, so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who were begotten not by blood, nor by cardinal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God. The Word became flesh and made his glory among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thanks. 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 Today, immediately after our Holy Mass during our fellowship hour, Dr. Shirley Metlitsky has offered to give a presentation on the uh, Committee of Future Direction um, and the Strategic. Yes, thank you. Um, I do bring to mind other announcements. Tomorrow night at 7 o'clock, there will be a monthly meeting of the Parish Committee. Uh, please be aware that along with Dr. Medlitsky, I will be traveling to Scranton for the upcoming Special Synod that will be held on Friday, October 25th. Um, the purpose of this gathering will be to nominate and elect a candidate or candidates for the Office of Bishop. Please keep us in your prayers. This week I also put in the bulletin the schedule for making Glumke. This is kind of like the final um, part in preparation for our Fall Bazaar that will be held on um, Saturday, October 25th. Not only the Glumke, but also apple uh, pies that are a part of our Fall Bazaar. I do bring to mind that next Sunday, October 27th, uh, Holy Mass at 9 and Fellowship Hour. Also, please be aware that there will be a Mass intention on the seventh anniversary of his passing. Special prayers will be offered for the repose of the soul of Robert Yakanowski, offered by his wife Mary and family. Also, please be aware that as we're coming to the close of October, we will be entering into the month of November, on Friday, November 1st, is the Solemnity of All Saints. Holy Mass will be offered at 9 o'clock. Uh, it is not a typo, uh, but on Saturday, November 2nd, the Observance of All Souls Holy Mass will be offered at 8 o'clock instead of 9. There are envelopes in the back of the church, uh, in the vestibule, for remembering of uh, individuals of our families that will be read not only on Sunday, November 3rd, but also on that Saturday. On Sunday, November 3rd, please be aware that daylight savings time will end so that in two weeks we need to fall back one hour. Is there any other announcements? Marianne, I think it was about the uh, raffle prizes. As well as today, we would celebrate, have celebrated my father's 98th birthday, Bernard Edward Hale. Thank you. So we may say prayers for him. Yes, of course, Marianne. Thank you. Peg? The AMS still has three kids. 
calendars left. So if you missed the initial sale, uh, oh, yes, it's upside down. <laughs> uh, so there's seven dollars a piece. I'll be downstairs if you wish to get one. Thank you. Other intentions. Should always remember our sick as well as our shut ins. Oh, yes, actually, too. Teresa. As you go to the synod, I pray that it's a good synod. I know it's only for election of a bishop, not me, not only. But it does determine the future of our church. And it would be very interesting to bring back the plans for the elected bishop, what his thoughts are. Of course. And number two, I would like to offer prayers for unborn or fetuses that were pronounced dead. And the mothers have to deal with that in the process. Thank you, Teresa. And of course, one of the things that was, when I was in Syracuse, New York, not only was I a um, basic EMT, a coronary medic, paramedic and a trauma medic, but I also worked, I uh, received special training where we would go out for um, infants, high-risk infants, and we would stabilize, setting up a surgical field, and we would bring little babies back. And uh, unfortunately, a lot of times, even in a type A perinatal neonatal center, it, um, it did not work out, and I think one of the most heart-wrenching things that um, I had heard and also had seen are parents that have to come in after, after their babies being born had passed. Yeah, we remember that as well as the fetuses. Yes, this is even earlier than that. And yes. the pregnancy all of a sudden is gone. Thank you. Let us remember in prayer then. The, um, the suffering and the agony that they have to endure. Um, we say that childhood is a blessing, or children are a blessing of, of God, and how wrenching it is to, to carry uh, that fetus inside and not to have it come to term. So thank you, Teresa. Our thoughts and prayers. Are there any other intentions? If not, then let us offer our prayers for the, the intentions that were mentioned today, as well as praying for not only our church, but also for one another. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. And for the prayers of all the faithful departed, eternal rest grant unto their souls, O Lord. May they all rest in peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.